We have our structure and our formulas in place. Let's enter some data and see how our formulas work. We'll start by entering January's income of $2,000. Select cell B3 and type 2000. Don't enter a dollar sign or commas. Press tab. It looks like our formulas are working. With 2000 income and no expenses, we have a balance of 2000 in cell B13. Suzanne is hoping her income will increase over time, so she has added that into her predictions. Enter the income for each month. Pause the lesson if you need more time. To record data, press the right arrow on the keyboard or the tab key. Pressing the Enter key selects the cell below the current cell. Use Enter, Tab, Shift Tab, and the arrow keys to navigate between cells. By default, numeric entries are right aligned in the cell, while text entries are left aligned. Let's enter the monthly dollar amounts associated with each expense. The cost for rent and advertising are the same each month, so entering the values will be easy. We'll look at two different ways to do it. Click to select cell B6 and drag to G6. Type 1000. Instead of pressing the Enter key or a directional arrow on the keyboard, press the Control key and the Enter key at the same time. The amount of 1000 appears in every selected cell. We can also use the fill handle to enter the same amount in each month's cell. Click to select B7. Enter 95. Use the fill handle to drag 95 to G7. Release the mouse. The amount of 95 appears in every cell. The cost of telephone and office supplies varies from month to month, but Suzanne has estimated an average. Enter 100 for telephone and 50 for office supplies. Once again, pause the lesson to enter the numbers. Not all expenses are monthly. Some come once a year, and others, like insurance, are at times paid every quarter. Let's see if our spreadsheet can accommodate this expense. Select cell D10 and enter 200 for March's insurance premium and press tab. Another insurance premium is due in June, so enter 200 in cell G10. Let's add borders around the expense totals. Highlight cells A11 through G11. The border tool is contained in the font tool area under the Home tab. It looks like four squares directly next to the underline icon. Click the down arrow next to it to see the vast array of border choices available. Click the last choice in the third set, the top and double bottom border, a solid line above the selected cells and a double solid line below will be the result. Click any cell to deselect the current range of cells. Let's add another format to help separate the total numbers from the raw data. Select B13 through G13. In the Number Tool area, select the currency icon. It's a dollar sign. Excel added a dollar sign, a decimal point, and two zeros to the balance totals. We need to add another expense row to take care of the cost of inventory. Suzanne has decided all profit each month should go back into her store by expanding her inventory of books. Right-click the row header that appears just left of the insurance label. This opens a shortcut menu with a list of commands that can be applied to the selected workbook area. Click Insert. A new row appears between office supplies and insurance. We'll use it to enter data for inventory expenses. Anytime you insert a new row, it is entered above the row you select. Each time a row or column is inserted or deleted, Excel adjusts the formulas in that spreadsheet to accommodate those changes. Let's add another row, this time using the ribbon. It might be logical to go to the Insert tab, but this tab is for adding charts, graphs, tables, and illustrations. In order to add cells, rows, or columns, we stay on the Home tab and go to Cells. Click the drop-down arrow under Insert. 
Select Insert Sheet Rows, and another row appears. We don't need this row, so press Ctrl-Z, the keyboard shortcut for undo. Click cell B12. Excel expanded the cell range so the formula includes the additional row in its calculations. And if you look at the other formulas, you'll see that they also adjusted to accommodate the new row. Let's enter the new expense label. Click cell A10 and type in the word inventory. Suzanne wants to allocate each month's balance to replenish her inventory. Press the right arrow key, enter 755, and press the Enter key. We've now allocated all our income, leaving a dash in the January budget. Let's see what happens if we enter $755 in each month for inventory. Click the fill handle on B10 and drag it to G10. It looks like we have a negative balance of $200 for the month of March, but we have positive balance for April, May, and June. We need to adjust our figures to make our budget balance. Suzanne will have to reduce the amount of inventory she purchases in March to balance her budget. Click D10 and enter 555. Press Tab. In April, Suzanne predicts that her bookstore's income will increase, so she will be able to spend more on inventory. Highlight cells E10 through G10. Type 1255. Press Control and Enter to enter that amount in the remaining cells. Uh-oh, we still have a negative balance for June. That's when our quarterly insurance payment is due. Click G10 and enter 1055. Now our spreadsheet balances. Of course, we can try out other what-if scenarios such as reducing the amount of money paid on office supplies. Feel free to experiment with the budget after this lesson. Save the workbook either by clicking the Save icon or using the keyboard shortcut of Control-S. In the next section, let's make some more changes to our workbook before we print, by learning to manipulate the worksheets within a workbook.